Several parties ran on an, on an anti-EU ticket, including Nikki Sinclair. She was voted in as a, a UKIP MEP back in 2009, but ran in this election under the We Want a Referendum Now banner. Uh, Nikki, however, lost her seat. And uh, Nikki Sinclair joins me now. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Uh, has pressure from anti-EU groups ramped up the pressure on David Cameron, do you think? Absolutely. Uh, you know, when I when I joined this fight and um, joined UKIP 20 years ago, it was certainly a minority opinion. And now Nick Clegg's party holds the minority opinion. So there's been a complete sea change in Britain over the last 20 years on the attitudes towards the European Union. Will it lead to anything changing, do you think, you know, with success across Europe for the, these other anti-EU parties? I think, I think it has to, but then I, I wonder, you know, my experience in the European Union for five years, they, they are very arrogant about the, the ordinary people. I mean, obviously, they, when, when referendums, for example, Ireland have said no to certain treaties uh, a few times now, and they were just told to vote again and get the answer right. And that's happened to Denmark uh, and a few other countries. So there is a certain arrogance within the, the Euro, Euro politariat. And, and therefore, I mean, we need a prime minister who's very strong for this country and actually says, come on, we need to change. But most of all, I think we need this referendum. And I think we need it sooner rather than later because my opinion after five years as an MEP who went there just wanting to leave and not caring about how we left, who wanted to leave immediately, I came to, to change my opinion that we actually need to have a national debate, a referendum, and make a decision to stay in the EU either fully engage with the EU, which we, which we haven't done for 30-plus years, or we should leave it altogether. I still think leaving it is the better option, but we need that national debate. But just the way that Scotland are having that debate about their independence, we need to have that debate about Europe. Why has there been that reluctance to have that debate, do you think? I think that, there's a, again, there's a, a bit of an arrogance towards people. They say that people don't understand the debate, but the Scottish people can understand the debate about independence from the United Kingdom. I'm sure that the British people as a whole can understand the debate about the EU. And I think there's fear. There's a fear that they know they haven't carried the people along with them on this issue. Successive governments of all the colours, you know, red, blue and, and orange, have not brought the people along on, on this issue. And now they're having to, 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 to explain 30, 40 years of European Union membership. You, you fought a, a very visible and a very vocal campaign. Were mm -hmm. you undone, do you think, by the strength of, of UKIP or by the, the kind of uh, frustration with the main parties? I, th I think a mixture of both. I mean, on, on the streets, people still saw me as UKIP, so I, I think that that, that was a, a particular problem. But look, there was a huge um, protest vote, and UKIP was the source of that. I mean, Nigel Farage was on the media day in, day out, so he was the focal point for a protest of an arrogant group of politicians who believed that those seats were theirs, no matter what. And I think that UKIP, and I'm very proud, you know, I was there for 16 years within UKIP, you know, and, and obviously it was also my petition, that the 100,000 petition that actually brought Cameron to the dispatch box when he said he wanted to stop banging on about Europe. So, you know, there's been a huge sea change, and we need to build on that, because I do believe that the time will come that we will have this referendum. I just think for the benefit of our country, we need that sooner rather than later. It's interesting listening to, to, to many of the, the, the correspondents talking about the results and in, in the European elections and whether or not you know, people would uh, gravitate back to the main parties during a, a general election. There does seem to be an awful lot of people that say it won't happen. What's your thinking on that? No, well, obviously I've been, had the experience of doing well in European elections in the past only for the following general election to fall away. I don't think that's going to happen this time. I think that the only thing that the main two parties can do, if they don't like Farrell, and they want, and they, they call he calls himself the, the the fox in the Westminster hen house. They need to have the courage and be the farmer with the gun and shoot the fox, because they need to call Miliband as well. They need to call for that referendum early in the next Parliament. And if they do that, that will directly challenge UKIP. And I think UKIP may fall away if they do that. I just doubt if they have the courage to do that. What does the future hold for you? Well, it's a bit too early. I was only made redundant a day or so ago. But, um, you know, I'm 45 and um, I've had quite an eventful life. And if the second half of my life is half as eventful, I've got a hell of a lot to look forward to. I'm sure it's not the last we've heard of you. <laughs> uh, thank you, Nikki. Thank you. Thanks very Bye -bye. much indeed, Nikki Sinclair, who's a former MEP. Of course, she lost out uh, in the uh, European elections. Uh, her thoughts on the result and why it turned out the way it did.